Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. Uh, this is lecture number 33 and today again we will continue with this double integrals, but uh, with a special uh, application to surface computation of the surface area. So, we have already seen uh, the applications of double integrals for computing volume for example, and also the area of the uh, domain of integration and today we will uh, continue our discussion for computation of surface area. So, just to recall uh, how do we compute uh, the curve length in case of uh, single integral. So, for instance, we have this curve here or the function which is given by f x. So, this is x axis and then here we have the y axis and this is the function f x with respect to the values of x. And So, what we do? We divide the whole domain from A to B into small pieces of intervals from x i to x i plus 1 that is the one interval shown here, but we have discretized this the whole uh, domain from A to B into n such intervals and let us consider this point for instance this xi i within the interval this x i to x i plus 1 and corresponding to this point xi i we draw a uh, tangent at this point uh, here which is given by xi i and f x i and this uh, tangent the length of this tangent if we add for all the intervals and later on we take the limit as uh, the width of uh, these intervals go to 0 in that case we will end up with getting the uh, curve length. So, the idea is that uh, here this is just shown this part of the tangent. So, this is the tangent line at this xi i point and this is the interval length here delta x i and this is suppose the angle which tangent uh, makes from the x axis. So, that is we have denoted by theta. So, we have this length here delta l i this length here in the base here is delta x i and this is the angle uh, theta. Now, the length of the curve, so length of this curve L which is, so this is our curve L here and the length of this curve L will be given as when we sum all these uh, parts of the tangents and then take the limit because if we do not take the limit we have the error uh, because this uh, tangent is not representing the curve. Uh, in this interval delta x i, but when this delta x i will go to 0 eventually we will end up with calculating the length of this curve from a to b. So, we want to get this limit from uh, i 1 to n and then this uh, summed up over this delta l i and then the limit n goes to infinity and this now this delta l i we will we will write in terms of the delta x i and the function f. So, here the relation from this triangle we have that this cos of this theta is this delta x i over delta l i. So, which is given here delta x i over delta l i is cos theta or we can get from here that this delta l i is nothing but 1 over cos theta and uh, delta x i. So, this uh, cos theta, this cos theta again from this uh, uh, trigonometric equality we have the cos theta equal to 1 over 1 plus 10 square theta. So, this 1, 1 over 1 plus 10 square theta is nothing but the cos theta because we have 1 over and then the square root 1 plus this we can write down as sin square theta over 
uh, this cos square theta. So, the cos square theta plus sin square theta will be 1 and this cos square theta will go to the numerator. So, we will end up with this cos theta only. So, this equality here cos theta is equal to 1 over uh, square root 1 plus 10 square theta we can again get from here also this 1 over cos theta. So, if we rewrite here if we invert it we will get this 1 over cos theta is equal to square root 1 plus 10 square theta and this tangent theta. So, theta is the angle which uh, this tangent makes uh, with the x axis. So, that is nothing but the tan theta is the first derivative that is the geometrical interpretation of the first derivative. So, this tan theta is nothing but the first derivative at that point here xi i. So, we have replaced this tan theta here by the first derivative at xi i and this whole square. Now, out of these two relations we can uh, out of these uh, two relations here we can remove this 1 over cos theta and we can get uh, this delta L i is equal to. So, 1 over cos theta will be replaced by this 1 plus the f prime uh, xi i and this whole square and then we have here delta x i. So, this delta L i in the summation here we will replace by the square root of 1 plus f prime xi i and multiplied by this delta x i. So, doing this now we get this L is equal to this limit i from 1 to n and this delta L i is replaced in terms of the delta x and the uh, given function f. So, 1 plus f prime xi whole square delta x i and now we will write down this in terms of the integral as per the definition we have already learned. So, this if this limit exists we can actually represent this or denote this in terms of the integral from a to b the domain a to b and this is square root 1 plus the first derivative f uh, whole square and dx. So, this integral here uh, a to b and square root 1 plus f prime square dx will give uh, us the curve length of this curve which is given by the function f in the range from a to b. So, what we have learned that in case of the curve length the formula is given by the square root of 1 plus and this derivative whole square. The extension of this we will have for the computation of the surface where instead of the tangent line we will have the concept of the tangent plane and uh, and here we have taken the pieces of the tangent and then we have added them after taking the limit we got the the curve length in case of the two dimensional so we have the surface there and we will take the tangent plane or the pieces of the tangent plane and then we will sum uh, those pieces and after uh, taking the limit basically we will get the the surface area of the of the surface so, that is the trivial extension of this we will not go through the formal proof, but if we understood uh, the concept here in case of this one variable the integral which computes the, the curve length is given by the square root 1 plus uh, this f prime square d x. We will just make a extension here now for the computation of the surface area. So, for the curve length we have just seen the formula was a to b. So, over the domain we are integrating uh, this uh, integrand which was 1 plus f prime square square root of this. In case of the surface when we have a function z is equal to f x y. So, our uh, here this, this surface is given by z is equal to uh, f x y. So, this is the surface here and now we can get the uh, surface area again similar to what we have for the one dimensional case. We have the double integral uh, we will discuss this what is uh, the domain here now and the square root we will take 1 plus like similar to here we have the derivative here also we have the first order partial derivative. So, the first partial derivative with respect to x whole square plus the partial derivative with respect to y of the given function uh, whole square and then we integrate 
uh, this integrand over the domain which is in the x y plane and this is nothing but the projection of the of the surface in the x y plane. So, we have the sum surface given uh, over the z axis and if we project that surface uh, into this uh, x y plane then d will be exactly that domain in the x y plane. So, d is the projection of the surface in the x y plane. And similarly, because this equation we have formulated when the function was given as this z is equal to a function of x y and here we should note that the partial derivatives were taken with respect to x and y which was natural. And for instance, the function is given like x is equal to mu y z or it is given y is equal to psi x z. In that case, the formula will change uh, obviously. So, in this case for x is equal to the function of y and z then the partial derivatives with respect to y and z will appear and this domain will be the projection of the surface in the y z plane and in the case when the function is given by y is equal to psi x z uh, the integrand will have the derivatives with respect to x and z and again the domain of the integration will be in the x z plane where we are integrating the uh, will be integrating this uh, integrand. So, here in the case first when x is equal to mu x uh, y and z we will have the domain here which is denoted by this uh, d hat and now the integrand will become 1 plus del x over del y whole square and del x over del z because y and z are independent variables now. So, the partial derivatives will be with respect to y and z and dy dz and now this d hat will be the projection in the projection of that surface in the y z plane or in case when the function is given by y is equal to psi z. So, we will have the partial derivative of y with respect to x and z and then d x d z and here this d uh, double hat will be the uh, projection of the surface in uh, x z plane. So, this d hat and d double hat are the domains in the uh, y z. So, in this first case and then in the second case in x z planes in which the given surface is uh, projected. So, with the help of this double integral which is given by uh, in most of the cases uh, um, s is equal to this domain 1 plus z x whole square plus this z y whole square and dx dy when the function is defined as z is equal to f x y we can compute uh, the surface area. So, remember when uh, we had the application for the computation of the of the volume under that surface over the x y plane the formula was uh, simply uh, instead of this integrand we had the function here uh, f x y and if you want to compute the area of the domain of integ integration. So, the area of d in this particular case then we will just set this integrand as 1. So, we have three applications the one was the area of this domain d another one was the, was the volume under this uh, surface over the x y plane which was given by uh, again double integral where the integrand was uh, simply f x y and now we have for the computation of the surface area where the integrand uh, is, is square root 1 plus z x square plus z y square. So, now we will take the problem here uh, compute the surface area of the sphere x square plus y square plus z square is equal to a square. So, we have a sphere which is centered at uh, 0 0 0 and uh, given by this equation x square plus y square plus a square is equal to a square. So, the radius of the sphere is a. So, we want to compute the surface area now. So, we will take for instance the upper half uh, part of the sphere and if we project that upper half uh, part of the sphere uh, this will give us the circle of radius a in the x y plane. So, though we can project uh, we can project this to any uh, one of these planes we either y z or z x or x y. So, let us project into the x y plane. So, in the x y plane this will be a circle uh, of radius a center at 0. 
So, we have the domain now that is the circular disk in the x y plane and then the surface will be given by uh, simply this z is equal to the square root a square minus x square minus y square because we are considering the upper uh, part of the sphere and we can make it uh, the double to compute the surface area of the whole sphere. So, we are considering only the positive part the upper half of the uh, sphere and when we project into the x y plane we will get the circle of uh, uh, radius uh, a here and the center at, at 0 0. Okay, so, equation which will give us the, the, the surface here which is uh, which I have just discussed or for the positive for the upper half we will take uh, uh, z is equal to square root 1 minus uh, oh sorry a square minus x square minus y square for the upper half. And now we need to compute because in the formula we need the partial derivative of z with respect to x and also the partial derivative uh, of z with respect to y. So, for the partial derivative of z with respect to x, so this is a uh, power half here. So, we will get, so this is a square minus x square minus y square power half and when we differentiate this with respect to x, so we will get half the same. Uh, expression what is here and 1 by 2 minus 1. So, this is uh, minus half here and then the derivative of this uh, a square minus x square minus y square with respect to x that will be minus 2 x. So, this 2 will get cancelled and we will have with minus sign which is here and this x in the numerator and this power uh, which is uh, minus half here. So, that is coming in the denominator. So, that is the uh, partial derivative with respect to x of this function and then we have the partial derivative similarly with respect to y. The only difference will be now instead of x we will get uh, this y there and the domain of integration uh, which uh, we have just discussed when we project this upper uh, the semi sphere into the x y plane. So, we will get a circle uh, of radius of radius this a here and the equation of this circle will be naturally the x square uh, plus y square is equal to a square. So, let us say this is x axis and this is y axis here. So, the formula for computation of the surface we will make it double here two times because we are considering only the upper uh, part of this uh, sphere. So, we have also the lower portion. So, we can make it this double here with 2 and then this minus a to a. So, the uh, let us first fix the inner one with respect to y. So, in the direction of y we are moving from this circle to the upper half of the circle. So, that means uh, this is like minus uh, a square minus x square. So, the y from here uh, will be uh, square root uh, a square minus x square with plus minus. So, this will be with the minus sign and the upper half will be the plus sign. So, we are moving from the lower with minus to the plus 1. So, minus uh, a square minus x square to the plus here a square minus x square the upper part and then these lines here in the direction of our x we are moving from this minus a to the plus a in the direction of x. So, minus a to plus a and then this integrand which is uh, 1 plus uh, z x whole square plus z x z y. So, here the z y z y whole square and then d y d x. So, that is the surface we want to now compute this double integral which uh, will give us the uh, surface area of the sphere. So, that is what we have now the partial derivative with respect to x is given by this partial derivative of z with respect to y is given by this and that was the formula here this was uh, with respect to y. So, if we if we substitute this now, so these are the whole square of these terms what we will get. Uh, we will get uh, simply 
uh, 1 plus this x square over this a square minus x square minus y square will come and then here also we will get y square over a square minus x square and minus y square. So, this uh, taking this common x square and uh, minus this y square we will get uh, this x square plus y square will get cancelled and then we will get this one. So, this will be a over the square root uh, a square minus x square minus y square. So, again the same limits what we have there and the integrand become this a over square root a square minus x square minus y square and dy dx. So, now if we change to the polar coordinate because uh, that will be easier looking at the limits of the integrals and or as well as the, the integrand, it suggests that we should convert to the polar coordinate which was discussed in the last lecture. So, that means this x is equal to r cos theta, we will substitute x is equal to r uh, cos theta and we will take y, y is equal to r sin theta. So, with this substitution now and also we have to find the limits. So, for the in case of the circle uh, it is trivial to to get. So, for the theta we have the 0 to 2 pi because this is our circle here. So, the theta moves from 0 to 2 pi and for the r we will have 0 to a. So, r will move from 0 to the circle so that means 0 to a. We have the integrand a over square root a square and this x square minus y square. So, with minus sign x square plus y square which will give us from there x square plus y square is equal to r square. So, we have a square minus r square and this factor r which is Jacobian or directly we have also seen from the polar coordinate that we get additional factor here with r. So, we get r dr d theta with this integ integrand and now it is uh, easy to see because this r is sitting there and we have this r square term here. So, we can easily integrate now this integrand uh, with respect to r. So, what we will get because this power was a minus half. So, when we integrate this minus half and plus oh 1. So, this a square root will be in the numerator now. So, we have a square minus this r square and this 2 of uh, factor uh, is there and here what we will get. So, we will get uh, this we need 2 r here. So, the half we will multiply and multiply by by 2 there. So, but here when we take the integral so minus half plus 1 half. So, that will cancel out. So, we will not get uh, we will get this integral as square root a square minus r square. This 2 is is already there with this a. So, 2 a and when we integrate the the outer one because uh, the integral the inner integral will not have anything of theta. So, we can integrate the outer integral as well. So, in that case we will get simply 2 pi because the integral will be theta and the upper limit is 2 pi lower limit is 0. So, you will get 2 pi from the outer integral and the inner one is giving us this uh, a square minus r square square root uh, with the limit 0 to a. And now, if we uh, substitute this limit, so the upper limit here will give us uh, will give us zero. The lower limit uh, of r, when set to zero, this we, we will get here a simply with minus sign. So this minus minus will become plus, and the answer would be four pi a square. And that's uh, exactly the surface area of this uh, sphere, which we we already know. So but with the help of this double integral and with the help of the polar coordinates, uh, we could uh, very uh, easily compute uh, this surface area. So, moving to the next problem, we will find now the area of that part of the sphere. So, we have again a sphere x square plus y square plus z square is equal to a square that is cut off by the cylinder x square plus y square is equal to a x. So, this is a equation of the circle. So, here x square uh, uh, plus y square is equal to a x is x square and then minus a x and plus this y square is equal to 0. So, this we can make it whole square. So, a by 2 whole square. So, you will get x square there 
and there will be a term minus a x which is already there. There will be additional term here a square by 4 which we can uh, put it right hand side to compensate it and then we have here the y square. So, this is the equation of the circle uh, which center is at a by 2 and, and, and 0. So, a by 2 and 0 is the center and a by 2 is again uh, the radius. So, a by 2 whole square. So, with that, so let us clean it. So, here we have uh, this uh, circular cylinder. So, this is just uh, given in the x y plane, but we have the cylinder which is also in the in the along the z axis. So, here this is the projection of that uh, cylinder in the x y plane. So, this is here the x axis and then we have the y axis. The center is at a by 2 0 and the radius is again uh, this a by 2 of this uh, circle. So, now we want to, so again this, uh, this is from the last lecture also we have seen that this r is equal to a cos theta is, is also the polar uh, equation of this uh, circle which uh, may be required in, in our computation. So, here we need to compute again the z x which we have evaluated in the previous example also the z y and we want to get the surface here for this sphere which is cut off by the cylinder. So, again here we have uh, two times because uh, this sphere will have two part the upper one and also the lower one and this is cut by the cylinder here. So, and we are considering in our computation in our integration only the upper part of this here. So, we have to also make double because of this lower part. So, basically the four times because we are considering only this uh, portion which is cut by this half cylinder and uh, because of that we have to double it and uh, since we have the sphere. So, it, it has the above portion and also the lower part. So, for that we have to again multiply by 2. So, this is 4 times the domain d is the upper part of this uh, upper part of this circle here. This is our domain now and uh, so, this is again this del, uh, z over del y. So, we want to uh, we, we will put it there and as in the previous example we will get a over a square minus x square minus y square dx dy with 4 times which we can again evaluate. So, with the help of <coughs> with the help of the polar coordinate we can uh, now prescribe the limits for this upper half of the upper half of the circle here. So, the theta goes from 0 to pi by 2. So, this is theta is equal to 0 and theta is equal to pi by 2 and then the r goes from 0 to the circle. So, r goes from 0 to the circle a cos theta and we have a over a square minus r square with r dr d theta. So, again this is uh, very simple to integrate that is like we have done already in the previous example. So, once we integrate this we will put the limit 0 and the upper limit this a cos theta which will uh, give us here the minus a sin theta when we put the upper limit a square minus a square cos theta which will uh, give us a sin theta and this minus minus plus and when r is set to 0 we will get a. So, this is uh, minus a sin theta plus a and then uh, we will integrate here with respect to theta. So, this sin theta will give cos theta and a theta these limits 0 to pi by 2 and uh, once we compute this we will get this 2 a square and pi minus 2. So, the only the difficult part here is uh, is locating the limits for the integral and that we have to be careful. So, in this case uh, the sphere was cut by the cylinder. So, this projection on the x y plane is nothing but the circle because it was a circular cylinder and the projection is given as here by this circle. And then once we have uh, figured out this projection on the x y plane uh, then we can easily uh, put the limits of the integration. So, the last example where we will determine the surface area of the part z is equal to x y that lies 
uh, in the cylinder x square plus y square is equal to 1. So, again we have the cylinder, but it is a, it is a cylinder with center 0 0 and uh, radius 1 and we have this z is equal to x y we want to get the surface area. So, this is much simpler than the earlier examples. So, again the uh, projection of this uh, cylinder because the cylinder cut that surface. So, the projection of that surface over the x y plane will be nothing but the circle because the cylinder is the circular cylinder and the cir this cylinder is cutting the surface there. So, that will be the projection here and we can get out of this z is equal to x y this partial derivative with respect to x partial derivative with respect to y which are required in the formula for the computation here. So, over this domain d uh, which is uh, given here and then we have uh, the square root 1 plus z x square z y square. So, 1 plus x square y square and d x d y and in polar coordinate if we change this one we will get for the circle here 0 to 2 pi r moves from 0 to 1 from this point to the exit point here which is circle r is equal to 0 to 1 and we have a square root 1 plus r square and then r dr d theta. So, which we can again integrate this uh, easily. So, we have 1 plus this r square and this was power half. So, when we integrate the uh, 1 will be added there. So, we will have 3 by 2 and this will be uh, three, uh, 2 by 3 there to compensate this and then we have the limit 0 to 1. Putting these limits uh, and then there is no theta here. So, because of theta we will get also 2 pi. So, 2 pi by 3 this 2 gets cancelled. So, 2 pi by 3 and we have this when we put r. So, 2 power 3 by 2 and when we put 0 we have 1 there. So, that is the surface area of this uh, surface x y which is uh, uh, which is lies uh, within the cylinder here of radius 1 and center uh, 0 0. So, what so, we have seen this so another application of the uh, double integral uh, for the computation of the surface area and uh, with the help of this uh, simple formula over a square root 1 plus z x uh, a square plus z y square and d x d y only we have to be careful that uh, this uh, domain of this integral is the projection of that surface in the x y plane or we have uh, or it could be in the in the y z or z x plane as well. Uh, once we have that projection if we identify that projection uh, putting the limits will be will be much easier and we can compute the integral. So, these are the references we have used for uh, the computation uh, for this preparation of the lecture and thank you very much.